Yes, hello everyone. Uh, in our program languages course, we're now going to talk about uh, names and the environment. And this is uh, chapter 4 in our textbook. So here's the outline. We first talk about names in general and denotable objects, then environments and blocks, and finally scope rules. So we start with names. Uh, so notice that one of, and this is something that I've uh, talked about earlier, one of the important uh, aspects in uh, computer science is the abstraction mechanism. Uh, so often we, we try to abstract away from the physical machine. And we can say that a name is really just an abstraction device. A name is a sequence of characters used to represent or denote another object. And uh, we can, for example, uh, use, uh, or, or uh, names can, for example, allow us to use ab abstraction of the aspects of data, meaning that a, a name can denote a location in memory. And this is, of course, very common in programming languages when we are declaring names they in the physical machine the name really denotes a location in memory so we are really as abstracting away from the physical machine uh, and the second part here is the is that names allow the abstraction of uh, of aspects of control so for example when we uh, give a name to a function we're really uh, representing a set of commands which which are uh, programmed in the body of the function with a name. So we have uh, what is called data abstraction and control ab abstraction. Uh, a little bit more about names. Well, in most languages, names are formed by identifiers, that is by alphanumeric tokens. So we use uh, alphanumeric letters like characters A, B, C and numbers 1, 2, 3. Uh, but simple can also be names. For example, plus and minus are names really, which denote in general primitive uh, operations. So let's look at this uh, simple example here. We have uh, uh, a program in, say, uh, Java or C++, we have a declaration int phi, which declares a variable, and then we have a, a function int foo, a function foo that returns an integer, and in the, in the body of the function we only, only have a single statement, phi is equal to 1. So, in a way, phi and foo represent some objects. Phi represents a variable, which really stands for some memory location in, in the physical machine. And foo represents a function, so it, uh, which consists of a set of commands. And in this simple example, uh, this particular set only includes one command. Phi is equal to 1. So here we have these uh, exam two examples of well, the former one is uh, an example of a data abstraction. And the second one is uh, an example of a control abstraction. Uh, an important point is that the, a name and the object it denotes are not the same thing. So, for example, if we look at the declaration of int phi, we have the name phi. That one is not the same as the object it represents. The object it represents is is a, a memory location, but phi is the is the name of that particular location. It's not not exactly the same thing. Notice also that that a single object can have more than one name, and this is called aliasing. Uh, one example of that is when we have, uh, say, a two pointers that are pointing to the same location. In, in that case, 
this object, the single object, the location, the memory location, uh, has, uh, has more than one name. It has uh, two pointers to it. So we have named two pointers that point to the same location. And an important point here is also that a single name can denote different objects at different times. So how can this happen? Well, if you imagine, uh, say, a program in, in C++ where you have a variable x, uh, x uh, which is uh, declared in, say, the main function, and x is declared there as uh, having the type uh, uh, int. Then, uh, at some other point in the program, let's say in a uh, low in a function, x is also declared, and then it might have a different type. Let's say a double. So we have a single name, which actually denotes different objects an integer or a real, at different times in the program. So now we come to this uh, term denotable objects. What, is, what, what are denotable objects? Those are objects to which a name can be given. So if we can give a name to an object, the object is called a denotable object. And uh, we might say that we have two categories here. First, the objects whose names are defined by the user. So, defined by the user, meaning the programmer. So, the, what are examples of those? Well, variables, like we saw before, like we saw here. Uh, we named this variable, we called it phi. We named this function, we called it foo. So, th those are uh, examples of uh, uh, objects whose, who, whose names are defined by the user, formal parameters to a function, uh, procedures, meaning procedures or functions, user-defined types, when we define new types, we can do that when we define new classes, for example, because classes are just examples of types, labels, modules, modules are really group of uh, functions and data, uh, user defined constants, exceptions, and so on. So, all these are examples of uh, objects whose names are defined by us, by, by the programmers. Then, on the other side, we have objects whose names are defined by the programming language itself. And that means that th these are names that we do not give, they are part of the language. So, that would be uh, primitive types, for example, in C++, we have int as a primitive type, we have uh, bool, we have uh, uh, double. We have some primitive operations that are already defined, for example, plus and minus and multiplication. And we have some predefined constants that are also defined. Uh, let's say um, the constant uh, null in C++, which is already defined in some header file that comes with the compiler, so it's a part of the language. Now, there is also this concept of binding time that is associated with names, and notice that the association, or what is called binding, between a name and an object it denotes can be created at various times. And here we have four categories, design of language, program writing, compile time, and runtime. So if we look, look at each of these, uh, when someone or a group of people designs a language, they decide uh, what operations, what primitive operations, for example, are, are allowed or what primitive constants are, pa are part of the language. So, for example, that a plus should indicate addition, and int should denote the type of integers, and so on. So, at the, at the, at the time of design, there is some us binding between a name and an object it denotes. So, between a name, plus, is, as we said earlier, is a name that denotes 
uh, an, an operation. Uh, at program writing time, there is definitely some binding that is carried out. Uh, uh, when we talked about this earlier, that when we write a program, we give name to variables, for example, or, or functions. That would be a, 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 an example of uh, a binding that happens at uh, program writing time. At compile time, uh, well, as we have talked about, the compiler translates the, the high-level language into machine codes, and it allocates memory for some of the data structures, uh, especially uh, the, the data structures that can be uh, st statically processed, for example, global variables. At compile time, global variables are bound to some memory location. So the compiler generates codes for the f uh, that uh, associates uh, the name of the global variable to some memory location already at compile time. Then finally, at runtime, we have some bindings as well. Uh, because there are some, let's say, there are some uh, variables that are given uh, that are bound to uh, memory locations not at compile time but at runtime and examples of this are, are local variables inside functions and this is actually something that we will talk about later when we talk about memory management so it's it's important to 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 realize that this uh, binding between names and objects can happen at various times at the design of a language, when we write the programs, when we compile them, or when we run them. And in this uh, uh, regard, there are two other terms called static and dynamic. And these are actually two terms that come very often up in our discussion uh, in this course about programming languages. So static is used to s refer to everything that really happens prior to execution. So uh, as we talked, uh, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, something that can be sta statically processed, that means at compile time, because that's, that happens before the execution, it happens by the compiler. And then dynamic uh, refers to everything that happens during the execution. So it's important to understand the difference between uh, these two terms.